Jaffy, il y a une chose que je désire en ce moment plus que n'importe quoi au monde, plus que tout ce que j'ai jamais désiré dans ma vie. Quoi donc Une bonne tablette de chocolat Hershey, ou même une toute petite tablette Hershey de rien du tout. Pour toutes sortes de raisons, cela me permettrait de racheter mon âme. Et voilà où le bouddhisme va se nicher, dans une tablette de chocolat. Pourquoi pas un clair de lune sur les orangers ou un cornet de glace à la vanille Trop froid. Je veux, je désire, je souhaite, j'invoque, je conjure, j'appelle une tablette Hershey à la pistache. Je suis venu saluer l'océan Pacifique en hommage au clair de lune sur les orangers et à l'écrivain Jack Kerouac. J'arrive à San Francisco comme si j'avais traversé le Mekong. On voyage plus vite dans sa tête qu'en avion. Mon voyage a commencé avec la mélodie d'un saxophone. C'est cet instrument qui rythmait l'écriture de Jack Kerouac. Quand le souffle de l'instrument s'arrêtait, sa phrase se terminait. Il appelait ça l'écriture spontanée. Cousine de l'écriture automatique des surréalistes, l'écriture et l'expérience spontanée demandent à l'individu de s'ouvrir à la route et à ses imprévus. Je suis la reine des bohèmes, chevalière de Jack, Jazz, Kerouac. Oui, parfaitement. Il y a du jazz dans le canard laqué, il y a du jazz dans la pizza. Quand Kerouac venait à San Francisco, il commençait par le quartier de Chinatown. Chinois repas aux yeux bridés, ma chambre d'hôtel est toute trouvée. Mmh, tu es chinois. Pour vous situer, nous arrivons au café Vesuvio, l'antre des poètes volcaniques. Kerouac y trouvait son stromboli avec le vin et la benzédrine et ses muses, ses amuses, ses humeurs de muse dans le plaisir du mot qui glisse et se glisse. What do you think about Jack Kerouac? I would have liked to have met him and I'm really glad he came in here because now, you know, we're very famous that you know, he stopped in. So it, it gives the place a lot of cachet, and uh, it's, it's really nice. I met his daughter last year, and she looks just like him. She was really nice, and, you know, we owe him a great dad when he came. What do you have to say about that drink up there? What is it? That drink was a response to being asked, what is your specialty of the house? Do you have any house specialties? So the owner of the bar, put together the tequila, the rum, the orange and the cranberry juice, and put it in a big glass and said, we're going to sell this and call it the Jack Kerouac because people are insisting that we have this drink. And so why did you say our writers and poets that came here behaved differently? Okay. They just would get wild. You know, they'd just get wild. They'd start doing their poetry and, you know, insulting people and yelling and, you know, they'd be real uncomfortable, so people would start to complain, oh, these people are too wild. So they actually aren't allowed in? Some aren't allowed in. I mean, poets, poets and writers are encouraged to be in, but when they start acting up and getting loud and belligerent, then they get thrown out <laughs> like anybody else. So, they, but, you know, they come in because of City Lights books. You know, they go to City Lights and do readings or sell their poetry. Then they would come over here and drink inexpensive red wine. When I came here, was basically this was still a place for the, the poets 
and uh, I used to sit with them, and they, everybody of them wanted to just be like God. They wanted to just believe that they were the only people that had the right to do anything, and they acted like they owned the bar or the table. They didn't want anybody else who was not uh, agree, who did not agree with their thinking to be around it, and they started insulting people misbehaving and uh, so that's why everybody started just all the poets were 86 from here well th this one's terrific this one is just this is probably one of the best i like to scream when i have this sort of orgasm yeah. sorry this is a family bar this one family bar oh family bar <laughs> are we gonna have a picnic now or something yeah. well great let's have a picnic then Let's purchase a beer then instead. Yeah, well, let's see what's this one. Like? I don't know. I don't know about this one. Although, you know, I, I take a blow job from her. Definitely. You're going to have to leave oh, now. No I'm not going to serve you. You've had enough to drink. Oh, I'd just like my cigarette. Man. Yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Would you get that fucking thing away from me? Look, you the audience, you know. This is what this I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going <laughs> and then we have to throw them out. I was scared. <laughs> women like that, you know, that are standing behind a bar and flirt with guys like me, you know, oh, expect yeah, me to fucking well, throw them on the pool table actually, yeah. after two o'clock, you know, and give them an orgasm, you know. Jesus Christ, woman, what do you expect from me? So where are you going? Uh, Mexico City. Take me with you. You want to come? I'll drive. You'll drive? I'll drive. Have you ever been there? Oh, no, I've never been to Mexico City. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. How are you getting there? By car. We're taking a car across we, country. You should take us then. So do you want to come with us to Mexico City? Yes, darling. I'll go with you anywhere you want to go. Where are you going? To Guatemala? No, Mexico City. Mexico City? So how are we leaving? Tomorrow morning. Ooh, what time? Nine o'clock. Oh, God, I sleep until 11. Can you wait for me? <laughs> I hope you guys have a good trip. En arrivant à San Francisco, j'ai fait un rêve. En regardant les nuages à travers mon hublot, j'ai vu une érection universelle, une sorte de à dire vrai, c'était un phallus magnifique. Troublé, j'atterris sur la pointe d'un immeuble et j'entends le poète Grégory Corso, ami de Jack Kerouac, chuchoter son ode à la tour de Coït. Ce sont mes yeux qui t'ont rendu fantasmatique, nuit emplie d'illumination. Était-ce le désir masculin qui baisa le ciel avec ses monuments orange et argentés J'ai couru comme un fou sur le Golden Gate pour trouver la tour du Coït. J'aurais dû rester, mais je suis parti pour Mexico City, et là, Œil de ma main, cité, prison, impossible pour moi de tromper le plus simple des arbres. à San Francisco. Je suis hanté par le visage de Jack Kerouac et tout homme que je rencontre est traversé par son fantôme. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi. Um, I have a question for you. Sure. I'm looking for a man by the name of uh, Jack Kerouac. Do you know where he's at? Would I know where Jack Kerouac would be? Uh, I know where he used to probably hang out a long time ago. Uh, we used to hang out the, the, out in North Beach, um, kind of northeast of here. But I don't think you're going to find him these days. No, you never met him? No, I never met him. My name is Jack. Your name is Neil. Your name is Neil. My name is Jack. outside. We're uh -huh. going to Mexico City. Uh -huh. We're leaving tomorrow morning. Would you come? I couldn't. Why not? Because I have uh, a family. Mm -hmm. That'd be fun, but uh, I'm going to have to pass. I'd love to. 
you don't feel carefree? Uh, I'm always, it's always a struggle between being carefree and being responsible. So you're not coming with us? I'm afraid I'm going to have to pass. Uh, but maybe I'll meet you up in Paris or something someday. I'd like to do that. That would be fun, too. If we were going to Paris, you would come. Oh, yes. Okay, car outside. Yeah, and then now you're going to go to Paris yeah, tomorrow, huh? Going to Paris tomorrow. Will you come with us? No. Uh, all right, I'll go to Paris with you tomorrow morning. How about that? Go ahead, I'll follow the team with you now at this day. Anna, please say something in this moving situation like you're navigating in the car. Can you say something less obvious? J'ai feuilleté dans un bottin téléphonique et sous la lettre K, j'ai trouvé un Kerouac Jack. Hi, I found your name in the phone book. Are you in any way related to Jack Kerouac the writer? I could be. Everybody could be. You probably are. Just walk around, keeps your eyes open. If you have time, go to Desert Center. I'll send you something there. Why, thank you, Mr. Kerouac, Mr. Parody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so you're actually saying he had a spider on his face? Yeah. En feuilletant le roman sur la route, je me suis senti glissé vers les obsessions de ce clochard. J'avais des fourmis dans les yeux. Au sud, toujours plus au sud, la chaleur est toujours plus forte. Le chant des insectes plus aigu. Sur ma peau caillait des milliers d'insectes embouillis. Et je compris que la jungle s'empare de l'homme et qu'il devient jungle lui-même. When I'm here and I see the clouds, the ocean, uh, and this beautiful day, the sun is warm, I feel like, you know, fuck the work. My friends tell me you guys are looking for Jack Kerouac. Yeah, we are. We found him. Hmm? He's alive, you know. He lives in Northern California. Where? Oh, up the coast. A town called Guadalupe, as far as I know. You know, he's kind of like Elvis. He's still alive. He's doing pretty well, wouldn't you say? What is he doing these days? Oh, just hanging back, smoking that Mendocino blood, I guess, like everybody else up in Northern California. But I wouldn't want to give you any bad impressions about people in Northern California. But my dad actually, as a matter of fact, did know him back in uh, the old beat poet days here in San Francisco. What did he do with him? Nothing. My dad was just sort of a hanger on to the whole, uh, the whole beat poetry scene. And um, one person you might try looking for is a guy named uh, Michael Horowitz. He's the father, as a matter of fact, of Winona Ryder. And uh, until a few years ago, he owned a 
a beat bookstore on Haight Street. He's now in Petaluma. He's quite familiar with Jack Kerouac and his scene in his days. Every day. Well, thanks for the information. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize I was going to get interviewed. <laughs> I know for once in my life I'm living Had a good time sur une carte, chaque coin est une ville, chaque ligne une autoroute, chaque départ un moment de passé présent. Mon ami Ferdinando le barman se proposait de m'indiquer le chemin. The great Chinese dragon, which is the greatest dragon in all the world, and which, once upon a time, was towed across the Pacific by a crew of coolies rowing in an open boat, was the first real live dragon ever actually to reach these shores. And the great Chinese dragon, passing through the Golden Gate, spouting streams of water like a string of fireboats, then broke loose somewhere near China camp, gulped down a hundred Chinese seamen, and forthwith ate up all the shrimp in San Francisco Bay. And the great Chinese dragon was therefore forever after confined in a Chinatown basement and ever since allowed out only for Chinese New Year's parades and other un-American demonstrations paternally watched over by those benevolent men in blue who represent our more advanced civilization, which has reached such a high state of democracy as to allow even a few barbarians to carry on their quaint native customs in our midst. <laughs> There are some poetical themes that seem to be common uh, among your generation during a certain period of time. Which but would my be... generation isn't the same generation as mm. Kerouac and Ginsburg. I know, I know. But during the uh, mid-50s... When, when they were becoming dis discovered in, in New York City in the 19... early, or late 40s, mm -hmm. when they were at Columbia University, for instance, in 47, for instance, I was in Paris living in a French family, mm -hmm. um, Place Voltaire, working on a doctorate at the Sorbonne. I had never heard of these guys. It was only after City Lights Bookstore got started mm -hmm. in 1953 that I started meeting the poets because poets naturally congregate in bookstores. Mm -hmm. But, oh. And I had in mind George Whitman's Shakespeare and Company in Paris as a bookstore that I wanted to create here. Uh, when Kerouac was in Paris uh, during the time which he later described in his book Satori in Paris, uh, he went to see, uh, he went to Gallimard in, uh, I forget what year that was, but anyway his book uh, On the Road had been published by Gallimard, so he went to the offices of Gallimard and he asked to see Monsieur Gallimard. Of course, they told him Monsieur Gallimard was he wasn't there, and uh, and uh, he said, "But I'm Jack Kerouac," and the receptionist didn't know who that was, so he went away. He was he was mad because they hadn't let him in. And uh, anyway, he was very sub, sub Kerouac was very self-conscious about his French accent because he had this Canadian accent. He spoke, uh, he got, he learned French from his mother, whom he called Mémère, and she was a French-Canadian, and she had the, the uh, French-Canadian accent, the uh, Joual, I think that was what it's called, right? So uh, he was very self-conscious about his accent when he went to France because he felt that they were all putting him down for 
for having this uh, country country accent, like the hick town accent. <laughs> so that made him drink even more. And so after he got rejected by Gallimard, he went out and started drinking. And he was never happy in France. He was. He went down to Brittany to look up his his ancestors. And there's a part of Brittany, I remember Crossroads in Brittany, where all the signs begin with K-E-R. There's Karoe, Karoo, Karoo, K-E-R, this and that. All different little hamlets in his region. I think that was his last attempt to make any real connection with France. He was, actually he was too American by then. <laughs> Well, I take buses too, or take a train. As a hobo, but I do, you know, like I work or do my artwork, whatever it takes in the situation. I'll show you a piece of what I do. Ah, come here. But the only place I can find a stone for doing it is up here. What were you thinking about when we drove, came in driving? The road, life's experiences. Some of them get pretty interesting. It's an Indian. Yeah. Well, you get different contrasts from the stone. Gold on the outside, green on the inside. What do roads bring to you? Well, I go down and see how everybody else is living. But I just stick to the road. The way, T-A-O. Uh, do you feel lonely? At times. Tonight. Well, this is a big place around me. I like sleeping outdoors. Getting to and from gets to be a chore at times. But I prefer living outdoors. Your art? Well, I can do my art. I can do anything. I still do a day's work every now and then. Oh, yeah, roads are a way of life. For me, anyway. I can always pull my act back together. I know what to expect on the road. It's in the cities that get me. It's like walking through a minefield. You never know what's going to pop out of the next doorway. Would you like to see? Well, that's the only lady that ain't never let me down. I always walk back. Cet homme rencontré par hasard au bord de la route, près de Beckshire, c'était Kerouac réincarné. La voie est claire. C'est quoi ta route, mon pote? C'est la route du sein, la route du fou, la route d'arc-en-ciel, la route idiote. Tu m'as vu, toi, me crever le cul pour réussir Et tu sais, toi, que c'est sans importance et que nous avons le sens du temps, la façon de le ralentir et d'arpenter et de savourer. Je me souviens de cette conversation avec ma grand-mère qui en connaît un rayon sur Jack Kerouac. De sa vie passée dans un garden club à jouer au golf en sirotant du chéri, voici ce dont elle se souvient. 
Grandma, I didn't understand what you told me. So what does beat generation mean for you? What's the definition for your beat generation? I never thought about it, Anne. Beat what? Beat, c'est beatifique. What now do you think they were in? Well, I think they were a bunch of adventurers that were just trying for, to look for a different way of life. Allumé, junkies, poète, millionnaire. What does establishment mean? It means the, <laughs> the parents of the bad generation, is all I know, that had things the way they wanted them. Was my mother a hippie? No, I don't know. <laughs> Imagine two ice-cold, dripping wet Diet Colas. On your left, a Diet Pepsi. On your right, a Diet Coke. Now, picture a couple of frosty mugs filled to the brim with cracked ice. Let's pour the Diet Pepsi into one. And the Diet Coke into the other. Okay. Nous arrivons à Desert Center, le centre du désert. Je vais chercher mon courrier poste restante. Mon Jack Kerouac à moi a tenu parole. Les documents m'attendaient, la curiosité m'avait envahi. Pourquoi fallait-il que je vienne à Desert Center, ce bled perdu qui a pour seul centre une poste, un garage, un café, un rail de chemin de fer Le scénario me l'a appris. Jack Kerouac s'est arrêté ici. Excès de vie, panne de moteur, il était avec son ami Neil Cassidy. Ils ont goûté au payolt. Les cactus leur sont apparus comme des moines. Le ciel gondolait, ils avaient des étoiles sur le visage. Les trains passaient, les trains passaient, comme ils passent encore aujourd'hui. Je suis venu ici parce que Kerouac y est venu. Et je sais que derrière ce train, peut-être, il s'y trouve encore. Dans le vide lunaire de ce pays indien, ce sont les panneaux au bord de la route qui m'ont fait rêver. J'ai vu une Mescal Road, une Cactus Road, une Shakespeare Ghost Town. Après la Pacific Road et les publicités pour les hot dogs super longs, il y avait des poteaux télégraphiques qui étaient comme des croix. Nous sommes sur la Pearl Harbor Memorial Highway. Pearl Harbor, Hiroshima, Nagasaki. Mais où est donc la Midai Memorial Highway After the Second World War, American poets in general, not just the Beat Generation, they they had these literary myths that they had inherited. And one was a, a literary myth of D. H. Lawrence in Mexico. And uh, so we went to Mexico to live out the D. H. Lawrence myth. Could you tell us what that myth is? Well, it's a, if you've ever read *The Plumed Serpent* by D. H. Lawrence. It's a um, book he wrote in Mexico, and it affected a whole generation of American writers. What I mean by living out the myth, for instance, in an earlier generation, in the 1920s, American expatriates went, went to Paris, and they lived out the myth of he Ernest Hemingway and his book, The Sun Also Rises. We were still living out the, these old myths, we even, people in Paris right after the war, some of them even went to Pamplona to see the running of the bulls because Hemingway had done it. Les filles descendirent et on s'embarqua pour notre nuit grandiose, poussant une fois de plus la voiture en bas de la rue. Hi ho, let's go, cria Dean. Et on sauta sur le siège arrière et on partit dans un kitty de ferraille pour le petit Harlem de Folsom Street. En sautant dehors dans la nuit chaude, affolante, on entendit un ténor saxo sauvage qui beuglait jusque dans la rue. On poussa des « hi-ha, hi-ha, hi-ha », claqua la cadence avec les mains, tandis que les gens gueulaient « go, go, go ». Dean traversait déjà la rue en courant avec son pouce en l'air, criant « blow, blow, blow ». Une bande de types de couleur en complet du samedi soir était en train de pousser des hurrahs devant la porte. C'était une petite boîte saupoudrée de sûr avec une petite estrade où les gars de l'orchestre étaient entassés, coiffés de leurs chapeaux et soufflant par-dessus la tête des gens. Un endroit loufoque. Des bonnes femmes avachies et loufoques déambulaient de temps à autre dans le secteur en peignoir de bain. Les bouteilles s'entrechoquaient dans les ruelles. Dans le fond de la boîte, dans un corridor obscur, au-delà du marécage des WC, une masse d'hommes et de femmes, debout contre le mur, buvaient du vin au whisky et crachaient aux étoiles. 
Mexico City Label approche. Plus que 24 heures. Kerouac la voyait pleine de lumière et de couleurs. C'était sa destination. Là-bas, là-bas, il redevenait enfant. Il pensait beaucoup à sa mère, à sa mort, à sa religion. Ce voyage m'hallucine. Peut-être qu'en arrivant là-bas, je serais redevenu enfant. Jacques Kerouac passait beaucoup de temps dans les toilettes. Non pas parce qu'il aimait l'odeur de l'urine. Jacques Kerouac passait beaucoup de temps dans les toilettes. Non pas parce qu'il aidait. Jacques Kerouac passait beaucoup de temps dans les toilettes. Non pas parce qu'il aimait l'odeur de l'urine, mais parce que c'était un endroit où il pouvait fumer un joint tranquillement et écrire. Alors pratiquement tout Mexico City Blues et Tristesse fut écrit, furent écrits dans les toilettes de l'appartement de Burroughs. Burroughs avait toujours peur d'une descente de flic, donc n'aimait pas l'odeur des joints autour de lui. This is the road, isn't it? This is the road. You, you may be traveling, you may, you may be staying, but this is the road. And, and, and Kerouac uh, find, uh, found out uh, that uh, very soon, almost immediately. This is the road, there is nothing else but the road. We've never seen anything else but the road. We have, you know, uh, 2,000 miles uh, of borderline. Uh, in, in my case, I've spent a lot of, of, of time and a good part of my life in the borderline. In Tijuana, San Diego, El Paso, Juarez, uh, Tucson, Cananea, Mexicali, uh, San Isidro, Yuma, uh, you know, all, all, all around, Naco, Nogales, etc. And uh, that kind of reality is not so different on, on, on one side and, and, and The other side, if you read, uh, for example, Kerouac's uh, descriptions of, of the strips uh, on that song, at some point you don't know if, if he's talking of that side or, or, or this side. Je lis dans l'aube des sens avec Alberto Blanco. Toute carte commence avec un voyage. Mais tout voyage commence-t-il avec une carte I like you mentioning this, this maps because in, in a certain sense, I think that the, the, the beats were experimenting the sensation of traveling in places uh, without maps, places uh, they didn't have the maps up. So that's something different. Uh, when, whenever you've got a, a, a map, somehow you feel safe. But uh, if there are no maps, well, uh, traveling becomes something else. It's like staying. It's like not moving. The mountains and the hummingbird are exactly the same. They move so fast. They fly so fast that they don't move. Geografía 1. No vivo en un país, vivo en una tierra. Las montañas de México no son de México. Ellas no saben que son de México. Que lo sean es un invento de los mexicanos. Los mares, el cielo, los valles de México no pertenecen a México. Se pertenecen a sí mismos. Son patrimonio del universo, no de un país. Hay que errar, no errar. La épica me pica, la lírica me irrita. Tu piel me descalabra, oh silueta vergonzante que acuñas monedas en tu coño monetario internacional. Y el Parque de México es el que está juntito. Ça y est, nous y sommes. Jorge, écrivain passionné par Jack Kerouac et William Burroughs, m'emmène dans la ville. El chiquito que, que los judíos lo querían comprar y cercar. Es muy extraño ver el parque de México.
practica las, practica las vibrado. Practica las. Kerouac has had a uh, with Neil Cassidy a idyllic vision of Mexico before he came here. What was that vision made out of? Well, they they thought that Mexico was some kind of paradise, very different from the United States. Uh, they don't like very much the United the American way of life. Then they saw Mexico as something different, and they uh, uh, took the, their cars, you know, and then came and they get drunk and they met girls and Kerak was more perceptive about Mexico than Boros. <laughs> Then we, we found more descriptions about the reality of Mexico at that time in Kerak than in Boros. And the vision of Kerouac is more real, real, more real, more uh, close to reality, if we can talk about it. In his first visit, in his second visit, Kerouac uh, lived with William Burroughs and, and his wife. And he was, uh, uh, he smoked a lot of pot and write a lot. Kerak wrote here uh, three books in Orizaba, 210. And, uh, well, you know, Borox uh, get drunk. He uh, used a lot of morphine and heroin here. No? And, well, it was uh, their way of life. And, but uh, they also write, they also thought think a lot and uh, they were maybe genius both. destroyed by madness, a starving steak and naked through the negro streets, looking for a land of peace. I know what that is. Yeah? How? How? En venant à Mexico City, j'ai trouvé Ginsberg avec Librado qui m'a récité de tête les premiers vers du poème How. De fil en aiguille, en cherchant un homme, je commence à rencontrer tous ses amis. C'est ainsi tout naturellement que je me dirige vers le quartier de William Burroughs. Aquí en el departamento 5 es donde vivió William Burroughs después del accidente en el que murió su esposa. Era un edificio de una señora que se llamaba Juanita Peñalosa, que también era propietaria del edificio de Monterrey 122, en donde murió Joan, la mujer de William Burroughs. En ese departamento, en el número 8, fue en el que llegó originalmente a vivir William Burroughs junto con su mujer, con Joan, que murió aquí en México, y con uh, los dos hijos de Joan, uno, uno de ellos hijo de, de Jack Ewart. Arriba, upstairs, lives the old lady that take care of the children when, uh, when uh, Joan died. He's in, the, in upstairs in, uh, in the room. Aquí en alguno de estos cuartos de azotea, la señora Marina es la única sobreviviente en ese edificio de esa época. 
en algunas de esas habitaciones, de, que son eh, cuartos de servicio, vivía y escribía ya Kerouac. Escribía bastante más tiempo que fumaba mucha marihuana. Se la pasaba fumando marihuana y bebiendo junto con sus amigos William Burroughs y otros americanos que llegaron en los 50 traídos pues, por el cambio del dólar. ¿no? Eran muchos pesos por un dólar. Y mucho más fácil la vida, menos, con menos restricciones, más liberal. Fue en plena época de macartismo, de, de la persecución a los comunistas en Estados Unidos. Entonces ella rentaba todos los departamentos, pero buscaba gente americana, ¿ve? A ella le gustaban mucho los americanos. Y aquí, en, en el descansito de aquí arriba, ahí vivió el sí, matrimonio. Sí. Ahí vivieron. En el ocho, Pero, ¿no? sí. Pero a él le gustaba mucho la bebida. Todas las noches se emborrachaba. <risa> bueno, no molestaba a nadie, ¿para qué le voy a decir? No molestaba a nadie, pero todas las y noches. Y se acuerda de los niñitos, ¿no? Sí, tenía una niña y un niño. Bonitos. Sí. Entonces ella en Monterrey tenía otra casa igual sí. que esta. Y también rentaba así los departamentos. Igual que aquí. Ah, y a ella le encantaban los americanos. Y puro americano tenía allá y tenía aquí también. Pero pues, desgraciadamente yo aquí... Tengo muchos años, sí. tenía yo 17 años cuando vine a vivir aquí. Y aquí me ha visto toda la vida, pobre trabajo, ¿no? Y trabajo luego... toda la semana, y por eso conocí yo a la señora. Tenía una niña y un niño. Y luego, cuando, ya ve que, la, que hubo un accidente y la mató. ¿Mandé? ¿no? Ya ve que hubo un accidente y la mató. Ah, sí, porque el señor y la señora tomaban mucho, ¿no? Y luego... Él se ponía la botella, ella, o no. él, ella se ponía la botella aquí en la cabeza y él le daba, le aventaba el tiro. En una de esas la mató. Pues aquí anduvieron los niños, acá arriba de la azotea, todo. Les lavábamos, les dábamos taquitos, les dábamos de comer. Y aquí anduvieron los niños solos. Los bañaban, los cambiábamos y todo. Y los niños andaban con toda la gente de aquí arriba. Sí. Mira, ¿tú te gustaría leer alguna vez de que aquí vivió un, un escritor americano que se llamaba Jack Kerouac? Vivía, mira, primero, primero vivió un señor que se llamaba William Burroughs en el número 8. Y él murió ahí con su mujer. Y luego pues, su mujer murió en un accidente. Y lo metieron a la cárcel y luego después se vino a vivir al departamento 5. ¿Te gustaría leerlo después? A ellos. A los dos aquí. A mí sí, a mí sí. ¿Qué te gustaría leer de él? Sí, ¿te gusta leer? A mí sí. sí te, ¿Qué te gusta leer? Pues libros de lecturas, cuentos, libros. De todo. ¿De todo? ¿Y de historia también te gusta? ¿Desde cuándo vives aquí? ¿Desde toda la vida? ¿Cómo? ¿Siempre has vivido aquí? No, aquí no, ella no vive aquí. aquí. Ah, no viven aquí nadie. ¿Quién vive aquí? Nosotros tres. ¿Desde cuándo? No hace mucho. ¿Desde que te acuerdas? No, no hace mucho. Vivimos aquí. Ya tenemos mucho tiempo. ¿Puedes decir que va? Kerouac, Kerouac, Jack, 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 Oh, Oslo. Enel Cassidy. Enel Cassidy. Jack Kerouac. A ver, díganme Jack Kerouac. Jack Kerouac. Otra vez. Jack Kerouac. Jack Kerouac. Fuera. Jack Kerouac. Gracias.
à mort. Il faut crier à mort dans un cimetière. Assister à un combat de coq, c'est avoir un revolver sur la tempe. Jack Kerouac se voyait mourir à chaque coup de bec et les roses dans l'arène qui célébraient la mort du taureau n'étaient pour lui qu'un infâme hommage à la mort. C'est barbare de mourir, Jack. Les routes sont circulaires, rondes comme la lune, droites comme l'épée. Tu m'as emmené vers Mexico, je t'emmène une dernière fois écouter Blanco. Tu vas me manquer, Jack. This, this poem is uh, titled Nostalgia, Nostalgia, Nostalgia. Uh, it's in many aspects dedicated to, to Kerouac, and it has a lot to do with uh, Dharma bombs. Uh, I'm going to read first in English and then in Spanish, because uh, it's impossible for me to feel the, the music of the poem in, in, in English, and I'll try to do my best in Spanish. There is a sky. Hmm. I can wait. Yeah. You know, it's okay with with me to to have a, a, some noise for for poetry, and uh, I'm sure that it was okay with with Kerouac to consider noise as part of the poetry. There's the sky. Now I can see it. There's the open sky waiting for the best I can give. Left behind are parents, friends, givers of advice, the dream toys of childhood, the tree of desire, night in the depths of the pool, the park that witnessed our first kiss. I see it all in the distance like a body that awakens in a remote part of a landscape. I look at it as if it were false. We have arrived at life, this life, by saying farewell to everything we've loved, to that which was given to all those we love. But there, at this moment, is the sky. <clears throat> Nostalgia. Allí está el cielo. Ahora veo. Allí está el cielo abierto esperando por lo mejor de mí. Atrás quedan los padres, los amigos, los consejos. Los juguetes soñados en la infancia. El árbol de los deseos. La noche al fondo de la alberca. El parque del primer beso. Lo veo todo a la distancia como un cuerpo que se despierta al fondo de un paisaje. Lo veo como si no fuera cierto. Hemos venido a la vida a despedirnos de todo lo que amamos, de aquello que nos fue dado, de todos los que queremos. Pero justamente allí está el cielo. 